Ladies and gentlemen, let us continue with the program. Mari will give uh, Samsa, Samsa. Okay, now uh, the director, Mari Flink, director of uh, customer experience and sales, will give us a uh, presentation. Please, Mari, the floor is yours. Hi, nice to meet you all. As, as Antti mentioned, I'm Mari, responsible for, for customer, customer experience and sales department. We have, a pro okay. we have approximately 200 uh, employees in my department, but uh, ticket inspectors, it's the largest group, almost 140 people working there. And I'm uh, about to tell you a little bit uh, how we have developed uh, HSL's brand and customer experience and feel free to comment and ask questions. So, um, uh, the legal frame, framework for, for the role of HSLs uh, comes from the agreement uh, between our own municipalities. So, we are the public transport authority of this region and in that, in that agreement, municipalities, they have decided that uh, we are the one who, uh, who is responsible for public transport, sales, marketing, uh, passenger information, uh, customer experience, etc. Uh, before HSL was established, there were two organizations, uh, UTV and uh, HKL, Helsinki City Transport, and uh, the sort of a, the, the environment was a little bit more complicated for the customer. But uh, HSL was established 2010, and since then uh, it has been a little bit clearer for, for, for the customers that they know that who is offering the service and uh, uh, who is responsible for the experience. So uh, this is uh, one picture of the situation, how it looked in 2009. So there were these two authorities, but uh, in addition to that, also several different kind of brands, uh, national railways, we are there, uh, which were uh, shown in the vehicles, uh, in the passenger information, signs, labels. This is the way it looks now, now 2017. So, uh, we have harmonized uh, the, the, uh, the look of the vehicles. We have brand identity there. First, the brand identity came to the buses, to, to the uh, trunk buses. And then, was it a year or two, two years ago, uh, also the trains. Trains are now under the HSL brand identity. Uh, and actually, I think it's uh, in, now in June when all our trains they are these they are these uh, fleur fleur trains, and um, some of them are still coloured with green. But uh, we have estimated that during the next two three years they all will be purple. Uh, one quite difficult task was and still is uh, those labels and signs on the bus stops. There are 10,000 bus stops, and still customers, they can uh, travel, for example, in Espo and see the name of this uh, UTV there. It might take, I don't know, next 10 years until, for example, those little details, they are all harmonized. And then when somebody invents that, hey, let's create a new name for HSL, then <laughs> I will oppose it strongly. <clears throat> And it has also been very um, quite challenging for all the players in this transport field because these brand, brand issues they are quite emotional. Uh, for example, for employees, so employees uh, in uh, Helsinki City Transport or National Railways, uh, it it might feel that okay, when our brand is not shown, we are losing we are losing something. We are not in contact with the customer anymore. And, but I think uh, now it was much more problematic, the situation a few years ago, but I think now 
uh, it is easier and all the other players they have also realized that okay it's, it's good that there is one strong um, interface for the customer. Uh, so today we have existed for seven years and uh, <coughs> and developed uh, our brand and identity uh, annually and at the moment uh, we have measured uh, made different kind of brand measurements and at the moment we are the most valued transport brand in this capital area uh, the uh, people living in uh, uh, HSL region in our municipalities, over 80% know very well what HSL is. And uh, the one thing which is uh, very, very <coughs> positive is that our users, 75% uh, of those citizens, they own travel card, and we might say that probably almost 90% of the citizens in this area sometimes use public transport. And 80% of our users, they give us a very, uh, very good or good rating. And uh, when we have analyzed our customer data, we see that the more people use public transport, the more happy they are with HSL. And that, that's, that's a good thing. <coughs> and during the last few years, uh, the appreciation for HSL has especially increased among middle-aged, high-income respondents. And also we have seen that uh, the male customers, uh, they have increased the usage of public transport. Uh, now when we see our, our travel card database, 55% of them are male, and uh, sorry, are female and 45% male. It used to be something like 65, 35, uh, some like 10 years ago. Okay, then uh, when we talk about uh, customer experience, and, and its relation to brand, actually they are not two different kind of things. They are the other sides of the coin. Uh, we can't say that we are something which we are actually are not delivering. So you have to keep the promise what you are giving. Uh, this is the uh, service promise of HSL from, this was um, created 2012-2013. Uh, we are now uh, starting a new strategy process, and our new strategy will be finished during uh, till the end of this year. And I think it might have some effects on these as well. But we are not going to renew these before before we have a new strategy. But um, uh, those attributes uh, above, they are probably something very similar to all cities around the world. When uh, different kind of surveys have, have been made that what, what are those things that customers, public transport customers, what they want, people, they usually they then to say that, okay, this service should be easy to use, it shouldn't be too expensive, uh, the vehicles, they should be on time and re reliable, safe, and uh, then this last one, expert, that is, that is not perhaps something what, what comes out of customers' mouth, but that is something what HSL still wants to be. But the, the, the attributes above, um, they are some kind of a like tapestry. They are hygiene factors. You need to deliver these if you want to be on the market. But the, with those, you probably don't uh, differentiate yourself. So uh, the attributes uh, below, they are the ones that, that we want to sort of uh, give also identity for HSL. So that we want to be social, original, and pr probably the funny is the most difficult one. And, uh, and that is something that uh, you can be funny in, in advertising and, and some campaigns in social media, but there are also occasions where you don't want to be funny. For example, when the trains are not moving and, and you have some crisis. Uh, so, uh, we have done this um, customer orientation work for some years in HSL, but still we are strengthening it. And uh, uh, beginning, of this new, uh, beginning of this year, we established a, a new organization where there are some structur structural changes. And, for example, uh, this 
division I'm leading, uh, custom experience and sales. It's a combination of um, previous department where, where we had marketing and communication in one department and, and passenger services in the other one. But now we have in, in, in one division, we have all the sales, uh, cu customers, branding, marketing, communication, customer service. But customer orientation is definitely not a thing for, for one division. It is a uh, process which goes through the, through the whole organization. And we have started a, a project now uh, which is, is about to uh, increase the uh, customer orientation um, sort of a thinking and, and methods uh, th through the whole HSL organization. But we see that we are in a, in a good position, we have a strong brand, uh, we have excellent services, excellent personal, and, uh, and very good customer relationships. So it, it's a good basis to build on. Uh, we have uh, described that what would an excellent uh, customer be? There are some texts in Finnish, but I, I will translate them to you. And uh, this is something we want all our customers to uh, to train and to develop them to be like this, so that they are willing to use public transport uh, in different kind of life situations and, and transport needs. They use seasonal tickets uh, uh, and they, they prefer self-service channels. Uh, they have a very positive attitude towards public transport, and they also recommend and promote public transport to their colleagues, friends. They want to have an active relationship with HSL. So even though it brings us a little bit workload that you know, we get feedback from the customers, but, uh, but eventually it's a good thing. We want to be in the interaction with customers, and they are active. So when some, some new uh, person uh, takes his first trip and buys a single ticket, then that's the hook when we should, you know, we should be able to uh, take that person from the hand and, and gently lean him to this <coughs> kind of a customer. How much I have time? Two minutes. Two minutes. Okay, then I slip this and I show that uh, this is uh, the way we would like to build our services and products so that uh, uh, we have a solid understanding of the customer needs and markets and then also strong processes, how we uh, create new ideas, develop concepts, test them with the customers and then eventually uh, pre uh, start a production. And then I show also one picture, which is, this is very, very crucial uh, from customers' point of view, that actually those people that our customers see, they are not employees of HSL. They are empl employees of uh, operators. There are almost uh, 4,000 drivers uh, working on the field, and uh, for the customers, they feel like, okay, they are those HSL bus drivers or, or train drivers. Or, uh, and uh, if we want to improve our customer experience, it is the question of how we manage that supply chain. And uh, we have built uh, together with them uh, this wheel of customer experience. And above there is are the needs of the customers, and below uh, how the processes should work inside our organization and also uh, with the operators. And uh, when you look at those uh, needs for the customers, they are not nothing very complicated. Quite simple needs that I would like uh, HSL to understand me, to be uh, interested in me, uh, to tell me if there are some problems with the services, uh, to be kind to me, and I would be, I would like to be able to travel uh, nicely and smoothly. Quite simple. What difficulties here? But then, when we look at the, the processes below, and we think, for example, those 4,000 bus drivers, and what are the tools and methods we are able to uh, improve the uh, customer experience there. How we, for example, are able to uh, make the bus drivers to look at the customer, smile at him and say hi. Then 
I don't have the uh, final solution for that yet, but we, are, we have many processes and, uh, and cooperation with the operators uh, for, for that common goal. Thank you. Thank you, Mari. Maybe applause for Mari. Maybe, Mari, when you said that we don't have a solution, maybe the instant feedback system could be part of the solution, getting the feedback on okay. the driver's behavior. Anna has already showed the instant solution. Yeah, okay. we showed it, yeah. Feedback it's solution. been seen. So